Hello everyone, welcome to Chemizon Complete Chemistry. So in today's video, we are going to see a brief introduction of spectroscopy. What is spectroscopy and what is the basic di difference between spectroscopy and spectrometry uh, that we had already seen, we'll again see in this video. So this is a brief overview of what we are going to see in this video. So let us first understand what is the basic meaning of spectroscopy and spectrometry first. Spectroscopy, it is derived from a Latin word that is pesser. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing this correctly or not. What is the meaning of this? To look at. And it is also derived from a Greek word that is called scopia, which means to see. So what exactly is the meaning of spectroscopy? What we study in spectroscopy is we basically observe the molecular by molecular motions or interaction of the molecule with the radiative energy. So, what is spectroscopy? It is the interaction of radiative energy. What is the meaning of radiative energy? Radiative energy means any electromagnetic radiation of the electromagnetic spectrum that interacts with a particular molecule. That is whether absorption will take place or emission will take place or there will be some molecular motion that we are going to see in a while whether vibration is taking place, rotation is taking place, electronic transition is taking place. That is what we study in spectroscopy. The interaction of the radiative energy with matter. Matter means it can be uh, any particular organic molecule or any particular molecule. So this was about spectroscopy. Spectrometry we had seen already in mass spectrometry. It is derived from the Greek word that is called metria. What is the meaning of metria? Metria means to measure. To measure. Okay, we had seen in mass spectrometry what do we see what do we measure exactly in mass spectrometry we measured m by z value what is what is m by z value mass to charge ratio right we had already seen what exactly we calculated is the mass of the mass of the different fragments of a particular molecule we studied in mass spectrometry so mass spectrometry or spectrometry is not Mass spectrometry is not a spectroscopic technique. Why? Because a spectroscopic technique is what it is basically interaction of the radiative energy with matter. We don't measure anything uh, in spectroscopy. Right? So, spectrometry is completely different from spectroscopy. So, always remember it is mass spectrometry because here we measure things. We don't uh, see the interaction of the radiative energy. Here, if you remember, we irradiated the molecule with any radiative energy no we irradiated with an electron beam right electron beam high energy electron beam so we did not use any radiative energy so now let us try to understand some basic terminologies based on the max planck's max planck's law of electromagnetic radiation So the first important thing is the energy of a photon or electromagnetic radiation it is what it is directly proportional to its frequency that is h nu okay h is a constant that is called as Planck's constant okay what is the value of Planck's constant Planck's constant is 6.626 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule second so here in organic spectroscopy this won't be very important but when we study physical spectroscopy there we will use this value of Planck's constant. What is new? New is frequency. What is the meaning of frequency? Number of cycles or number of waves per unit time. Frequency is number of cycles or waves per unit time. In unit time. What is the meaning of this? Suppose I consider one point and the number of waves that passes through this particular point in unit time that is let's say one second or one minute that is what is called as frequency. We basically count the number of cycles or number of waves in unit time that will be the frequency. Now what is the formula for speed of light? C is the speed of light. Speed or velocity of light is what C is nu that is frequency by lambda so this we can uh, sorry nu is equal to c by lambda 
So this we can substitute in this equation. We will get hc by lambda. So what is a very important conclusion from this three equations is energy of a photon. It is what it is inversely proportional to the wavelength lambda. That is higher the energy of the electromagnetic radiation, lower smaller will be the wavelength, and it is directly proportional to frequency. Okay, that is higher the energy, higher will be the frequency. Another very important uh, term is wave number. What is wave number? Wave number is inversely proportional to wavelength. One by lambda is wave number. Okay, so these are some of the very important formulas that you can remember. And now let us understand the physical significance of this or importance of this electromagnetic radiation. So you can see the highest energy electromagnetic radiation is gamma rays. Then there is X rays, UV, uh, uh, vacuum UV, near UV, visible, IR, microwave, radio waves. So with each electromagnetic radiation, there is some spectroscopic technique that is associated. For example, UV visible, we study which spectroscopic technique, UV visible or ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. And in UV visible spectroscopy, what do we study? Electronic transition. Okay, and then comes infrared spectroscopy, uh, infrared region. Under this, we study infrared or IR spectroscopy. That is, we study what in this case, in IR spectroscopy, we study the molecular vibrations. And in microwave, under microwave region, we have microwave spectroscopy. Microwave spectroscopy or it is also called as, we study rotational motion. So, it is called as rotational spectroscopy as well. A microwave spectroscopy or rotational spectroscopy. Because we study rotational motion. And last is radio waves where we study nuclear spin transition that we will see in NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy. Okay, so we will see in a while what is the exact meaning of all these molecular effects. Uh, coming on to the energy perspective of this, you can see gamma rays has the highest energy. That is, as we move from radio waves to gamma rays, energy is increasing. That is, gamma rays have the highest energy and radio waves have the lowest energy. Okay, so the gamma rays as the energy is directly proportional to frequency, the gamma rays that have the highest energy will have the highest frequency. As you can see from this diagram as well, frequency will be highest and wavelength is inversely proportional to energy. So, wavelength is shortest. So, you can see the wavelength is shortest. What is wavelength? Wavelength is this one complete cycle. Okay, one complete cycle or we can say it is a distance between two crests, okay, the higher energy ones are the crests, okay, here this are the crests, Ma maxima are the crests or we can say the distance between two minima that is called as trough, okay, distance between two consecutive crest or trough is called as what wavelength, so you can see here wavelength is, wavelength is shorter or minimum and here if you see the wavelength is what it is maximum okay so this was the basic information about the electromagnetic radiations now what we are going to see something very interesting is the molecular effects first is ionization so what exactly is ionization you have an atom you irradiate atom with some certain amount of energy such that it is sufficient to remove the outermost electron or the valence electron from the gaseous isolated atom which electron is removed valence or outermost electron is removed from an atom that process is called ionization so this requires the maximum energy okay after ionization comes electronic transition what is electronic transition transition of a electron from ground state or lower energy state to a higher energy state this is called as absorption okay a molecule if it, we talk about molecule, we say molecular transition. If we talk about electron, we say electronic transition. Transition means change. Change of the position of the molecule from higher energy, from lower energy to higher energy is called absorption. 
when the electron or molecule comes back to the ground state from the excited state that process is called as emission and in this process energy is given out in terms of electromagnetic radiation or h nu so this was electronic transition this requires lower energy as compared to ion the energy required for ionization then comes molecular vibrations that is which spectroscopy is re responsible for that infrared radiation right that is why it is called as infrared spectroscopy so you can see this molecular vibration this is uh, somewhat like very funny you can see it's like molecule is dancing or it is doing some exercise so this is very interesting we'll see in the next video all the different types of molecular vibrations this is one of the molecular vibration that is called as symmetrical stretching so what exactly symmetrical stretching let's say this is a methane molecule okay two hydrogens are in plane one hydrogen below the plane another hydrogen above the plane so what happens in symmetrical stretching is the bond is being stretched or the bond length is increasing away from the central atom okay for both the bonds that is called as symmetric stretching stretching in a symmetrical manner that is called symmetrical stretch so here we are not going to see in detail we are just interested in what are the different types of molecular motion so this is stretching which is a type of a molecular vibration next in important molecular vibration is bending this is also a type of molecular vibration okay this also comes under uh, infrared spectroscopy okay bending how does it look this is what is called as bending of the bonds that is also a type of molecular vibration next we come on to rotation for rotation we had seen which spectroscopy is responsible for rotation it is microwaves that are needed that is it is also called as microwave spectroscopy so here you can see this is a water molecule okay rotation of a water molecule across one particular axis like this it is rotating along this axis a rotation of the molecule and this is another molecule carbon monoxide it is also rotating along one particular axis okay so this comes under microwave spectroscopy or microwave radiations are required for rotation which is lower in energy as compared to uh, as compared to vibration nuclear spin is the last one so this we study in which spectroscopy nmr nuclear magnetic resonance so you can, here you can see nucleus is rotating along its along one particular axis that is nuclear spin for this minimum energy is required which waves are required here radio waves so now that we know all the molecular uh, effects or molecular motions now what we can do we can write one conclusion about the molecular motion that is maximum energy is required for electronic transition maximum energy is required for electronic transition then comes molecular vibration okay for vibration more energy is required and then comes rotation molecular rotation and then comes spinning okay nuclear spin or spinning of, of the nucleus and the minimum energy is required for moving a molecule in a straight line that is translational energy is minimum okay, to move the molecule in a straight line is called as translation for this minimum energy is required so here we come to the end of this video in the next video we are going to start infrared spectroscopy uh, i hope you have understood all the concepts in this video and i hope you have found the molecular effects interesting thank you